What up? This is Rama Screen, and it's time for another celeb interview. And in the anticipation of Painter, which arrives on video on demand October 13th, I'm here talking with writer director Corey Grant and the star of this movie, Eric Layden. How are you, Corey and Eric? Doing well, thank you. Congrats on the film, and extra congrats to you, Eric, because the right stuff also premiered today. So double yes. the success there. <laughs> Now, thank Corey, you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Now, Corey, I watched this movie recently. Big fan of thrillers about obsessions, and this movie's got a lot of twists and turns. So, Corey, what was the inspiration behind Painter, and what propelled you to come up with this specific story? Uh, I'm a very dark, uh, sick, psychologically twisted person. Uh, I'll start right there, and uh, I uh, have always been a writer. And uh, with this script, I wrote uh, almost 10 years ago now, uh, and I wanted to write something uh, personal, uh, close to my own experience as an artist, and uh, something I know we could shoot. So that happened to be a very twisted, intimate, uh, Freudian, uh, psychosexual thriller. Yeah. Eric, talk to me about um, what drew you to this project and what was your reaction when you first read Corey's script? Um, well, I first read the script and I put it down and I thought about it for an hour or two and then I picked it up and I read it again. Um, and then uh, my reaction was one of intrigue. Uh, you know, I thought that I thought it was a really well-crafted story uh, with, you know, a lot of psychosexual kind of tension throughout it. I met with Corey, we talked about it. Uh, we talked, you know, kind of, he talked to me about different stories and in and, and his life and kind of how it came about. And, uh, you know, listen, I was intrigued because it was something that I had kind of very far from anything I'd ever done before. So that's always, that's always intriguing as an actor. Who was the unsung hero or the unsung artist whose work, uh, whose paintings are on display in this film, including the paintings accredited to uh, Aldous, who contributed those works of art? Uh, a painter uh, who happens to be my cousin uh, named Gabriel Gelati. He's a Los Angeles-based painter. And uh, some of the work is, is uh, in, in incredibly his. Uh, most of the work that's play, uh, that is Bruce Courtney's uh, paintings are uh, very true to his work. Aldous's paintings we commissioned for the film that had to be something very specific, uh, be inspired by the characters and the story. So uh, we had him paint over uh, months uh, to get these, these paintings ready for our film. And I think he ended up doing uh, 11 huge paintings, one of which is right behind me right now. Um, and I also got to watch him paint, which was uh, an extraordinary experience. Uh, Eric. Talk to me about your process of embodying your character, your process of capturing the performance of a painter. You said you hadn't done this before. Did you shadow another painter? Do you yourself kind of dabble a little bit in painting beforehand? I did not, I, I don't dabble in painting. Um, I don't even really think about dabbling in painting. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just, it's just not who I am. Um, but I'm an artist and so that's a start. And, and really, you know, I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't approach it in the mindset of necessarily what a painter, how a painter would react, uh, what a painter would do in this situation, because ultimately a painter and myself are both artists. And it's really more about, you know, kind of thinking in terms of an artist, uh, which is something I can relate to, and also just as a human being. So, you know, for me and my process, what I needed from Corey is for us to sit down and talk about who all this is, um, everything leading up to the point of where we meet him, um, and really being very specific about things that happened in his life with Ryan, uh, with his family, uh, just what put him in a mindset uh, that he would be in when we meet him in this film. And then from there, the words in the script are kind of the roadmap. So from there, I can just live in that moment, but it's all the stuff before the backstory that I really needed to make sure that Corey and I were on the same page because those are all the things, of course, that would influence the way I, I react uh, in certain situations. Here's a fun question for both of you. As a fan of Boy Meets World, I was geeking out uh, to find uh, 
Corey's mom, Amy, the other Corey, show up in this film. What a pleasant surprise. I'm, I'm of course, referring to the legendary Betsy Randall. So, uh, Corey, did you always have Betsy in mind for the role of Joanne? W what do you think made Betsy such a perfect fit for Joanne? And Eric, what was it like acting alongside Betsy? Uh, I, I have to say, Betsy Randall, uh, I grew up watching Boy Meets World as well, and Betsy Randall was the furthest actress in my mind from playing Joanne. I just thought of her as a warm, bubbly, uh, funny, uh, charming actor. And, 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 and she honestly never occurred to me. And so when she came into the room, there was like a, a kitschy kind of campy, nostalgic feeling. And then she started reading and I really, she, she just immediately grabbed the, the role. Uh, she has somehow in this film chameleoned and I think uh, like uh, Eric gotten to play something she doesn't get to play if ever. Um, and she has changed her voice, changed her hair, her, her walk, everything to kind of fill the shoes of this role and uh, blew my mind every day. Uh, she just came up with new ideas on the set every day. I mean, a lot like Corey, like when I met Betsy, you know, she is just this lovely, lovely, happy person. And when I, when I, when I, you know, when Corey told me that she was going to do it, um, at first I was like, really? Like, that just seems like such an odd choice. Um, but really and truly it's the perfect choice and it's the perfect choice for that reason, because it's so, um, subtle and it's not on the nose. You know, there, there's, I'm sure Corey saw a ton of actress that came in and played that, um, really on the nose and, and, you know, what makes her so kind of scary and psychological is that she approaches it from a completely different angle. And uh, so it was it was great to work with Betsy. And I didn't know her before. I'm thrilled to know her now. She's a fantastic talent. And um, it was kind of great that I didn't know her before and that we didn't have a lot of rehearsal time because uh, it was, you know, true to the piece uh, of, of meeting this woman for the first time and not knowing too much about her. Eric, uh, as I'm wanting to answer my final questions, I got to ask you this. Um, your character, Aldous, is very complex. Uh, how would you describe Aldous? Is he misguided? Is he too trusting? Does he not believe in his own work at times? I don't know that Aldous, I, th I think he actually really believes in himself as a talent. Uh, and I think he absolutely believes in his own work. I think he struggles like so many artists do in any medium with this idea of acceptance, fame, success, money. You know, art is one of those things that like, you know, you try to, when you do art for yourself, uh, it's one thing, but when you do art and try to make a living with it, it's another thing because you ultimately probably can't do it just for you anymore. You know, when you're doing it for money, you have, there's other things at play that you have to kind of succumb to. And I think that's something that Aldis just really, really struggles with. Uh, and I know for me as an artist, like it's, it's a difficult, it's always a difficult balance. You know, sometimes you have to do stuff that you feel like you're kind of selling out, um, you know, or you, you go against that, but you end up not being able to become as successful or, you know, as you think you should be or you want to be. Thank you for sharing that. And lastly, uh, Corey, to me, this is just my opinion. The world of painting and art gallery uh, seem to, for me at least, always keeps a distance, so to speak, meaning it, it seems to be only for the sophisticated or the ones with the eye for that kind of stuff. What is the commentary that this movie wants to convey with regards to the world of painting and art gallery? Uh, you know, I think that that tension has always lived there. Uh, between kind of the general population, the general public and art. Some people feel that uh, it's inaccessible to them. And uh, I, I'd certainly say that the art world likes to keep that tension alive. That being said, uh, I, I, I don't think anybody should feel that way. I don't think uh, any person should feel that art isn't for them, uh, that it's beyond them, above them. Uh, an artist as opposed to gallery owners uh, and, and curators and, uh, not, and, mu and museums. An artist wants uh, a reaction from every person, from every walk of life. And uh, when it comes to paintings or sculpture, 
they just they want your honest reaction and 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 they don't care they, they want you to bring your own personal life experience to that viewing of their work they hope to connect they're not doing it for that upper echelon of the art world um so ignore that uh and i hope people will watch this movie uh especially people who uh, feel that the art world's not for them or is obscure or hard to reach or uh, i want them to say fuck that and move on uh enjoy art it's it's for you awesome well uh for my fans at home everybody go watch painter on video on demand october 13th eric and corey thank you for talking to me and congratulations thank you very much